The first real speed bump you're likely to hit in Shadow of the Air Tree is this jerk, the Black Jail Knight, located in the Western Nameless Mausoleum, not too far from the beginning of the DLC. It's a tough fight for a number of reasons, so if you're struggling, here are some tips on how to bring him down. First off, you can fight this boss as the first thing you do when you enter the DLC, but it's not recommended. You should take some time to collect some Skadu Tree Fragments first, increase your damage and damage resistance, and then come back for a more reasonable fight when he's not killing you with just a few hits. We've got a video on how to get your Skadu Tree level up to plus 7 right out of the gate, meaning you'll be hitting 35% harder and taking about 35% less damage while in the Realm of Shadow. So go check that out if you're still struggling with this boss even after these strategies. One of the main reasons why this is such a tough fight is that there are no summons or spirit ashes allowed in this arena, so you're going to have to take care of this all by yourself. His moveset is extremely basic, it's just the standard greatsword moveset that hits hard and from a great distance, plus a jump attack and his weapon art. He can combo after any one of his normal attack swings, so regardless of what kind of build you're using, the one rule I want to emphasize in this fight is to avoid using basic attacks. Even if he's staggered, his attacks can come out of a stagger very quickly and deal a huge chunk of damage. It's also very tough to heal in this fight as the arena is small and he will stick to you like glue if you try to run away to heal. Other than that, you'll need to look for opportunities to land jump attacks, charge attacks, backstabs, or reposts as he's very vulnerable to parries. To that end, the Claw Talisman, which increases the power of jump attacks, and the Axe Talisman, which increases the power of charge attacks, are two very useful talismans to have in this fight. Let's start with some general recommendations for this fight, regardless of what build you're using. You don't want to trade blows against the Black Jail Knight, so instead, be patient and wait for safe punishment opportunities. The most obvious one of these is when he fires his barrage of crossbow bolts. You have enough time here to even land a full-on two-handed charge attack. The next big opportunity is when he does his jumping slash. Roll through it and either do your own jump attack right back, or you can take a bit of a risk and try to run to his back and get a backstab. You'll also want to look out for his weapon art which you'll be able to see coming when he raises his sword to the sky. He'll charge it up, then swing it down for a hugely damaging projectile that he can then follow up with the spinning slash. Dodge the projectile to the side, and then be ready to dodge through the follow-up. You can once again land a jump attack here, or attempt to run in for a backstab. As for his regular attacks, you're taking a big risk by trying to attack him after any of them. He can delay his combos and catch you when you thought his combo was done. My recommendation would be to only attack with a jump attack after he whiffs one of his basic attacks. If you block an attack or dodge, just keep moving back and wait for his next move. Keep an eye out for when his health reaches a bit less than half, as he will heal himself once. If you're fast enough, you can interrupt him, but don't stress if you're unable to stop him. He may even try to heal himself again later, but discover that his flask is empty, opening himself up for another free hit. Finally, his attack timings are very consistent, so once you find the parry timing, you can very reliably just parry all of his basic attacks. Try circling to his right side so that you have a split second more to see his attack coming, but pretty much as soon as you see him move his arms to ready his sword, press the parry button. All of this is made much easier with a buckler parry, but it's more than possible with a regular shield parry as well. Don't get greedy after you land the repost. Just back away, reset, and wait for him to come in again. When it comes to healing, these opportunities to attack are also opportunities to heal. So, if you need to heal, look for these opportunities instead of just trying to heal when you put a bunch of distance between you two. As said before, he's fast, and if he hits you while you're still drinking a flask, it's a waste of a flask. If you're an intelligence build, one Ash of War that you should consider packing with you is Karayan Grandeur, which you can find right here in the Karayan Manor, located near the end of a path leading south from the door to the Royal Knight Loretta boss. After dodging the initial barrage of crossbow bolts, you can charge a level 2 attack with the Karayan Grandeur to put the knight on the ground and then charge up another one to level 2 before he gets up. Wash, rinse, repeat until you're out of stamina, and then do it again when you have an opportunity to attack. And that's all you need to know to beat the Black Jail Knight in Shadow of the Air Tree. To summarize, be patient, don't trade blows with him, if you're comfortable with parries, use them, make sure that you're hitting him with jump attacks, charge attacks, backstabs, 
or repost from parries almost exclusively during his vulnerable windows, and if you use magic, consider using the Crying Grandeur Ash of War. Thanks for watching, and for more Shadow of the Air Tree boss guides, make sure to check out our video on how to beat the Dancing Lion and Rolana. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.